17 years old. Future full of uncertainty, young confused mind caught up in the wrong crowd with low aspirations. But I knew deep down, as cliche as it sounds, that rhymes, I wanted to be successful. But I didn't know what success looked like. I just knew there needed to be a big dream or some type of dream. However, living the life I was living, achieving a big dream was never gonna be possible. I felt stuck. I haven't seen my mother in six years at this point, and the person I now see is my mother, my grandmother, she has passed away. And my father, the hardest worker I know, was out creating a life for himself and his new little family. In all honesty, I felt so alone. And turning a dream into reality felt like a million miles away. The reason why is because it was. We've all heard those similar sayings. It takes years and years of hard work, blood, sweat and tears to turn a dream into reality and become an overnight success. However, I had no choice. In my job, I see person after person quitting on their goals and killing their dreams, and I didn't want to do that. But then there was something holding me back, and this something holds many people back, and that is fear. Now put your hands up if fear stopped you from doing something before. Put your hands up. Okay, we're on the right path. My mentality was, if I never tried, I could never fail. But I quickly learned that not trying is failing within itself. So that meant I had no choice. I had to put in 110% into my big dream, whatever that may be. And I didn't want to have any regrets or any what ifs. Now put your hands up if you've ever had any regrets before. Put your hands up. Okay, we're on the right path. And the truth is, when my grandmother passed away, I did go down the wrong path, get involved in the wrong activities with the wrong people. I'm not going to go into much detail to what we was doing, but I can tell you something. It was only going to end in two ways. I was going to get in trouble, or I was going to get hurt. But I mean, at that time, I started playing American football because that was a great way I could hurt people and not get arrested. I loved it. <laughs> it was like meditation. <laughs> but then over time, I started developing this goal and this dream of going to America and getting a scholarship. But I meant I had to turn my life around. I had to turn my education around. So I joined the only American football academy in the UK. That was easy. But now I needed to get onto this level three business course. And to get onto this level three business course, all you needed was five GCSEs. That was it. Only five. The problem was I only had four. But I thought it was my only opportunity. So I rang up the head of the department. I arranged the interview. And I mean, at this point, I was so naive to interviews. Normally, obviously, you've got to turn up wearing a shirt, tie, kind of look like you're going to a wedding. But I turned up with jogging bottoms, a baggy T-shirt. I thought she was going to tick the box and let me go through. But of course, I was wrong. I remember I sat down. She was there. Miserable lady, to be fair. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but she asked me. She said, Cameron? You only have four GCSEs. We require five. What do you think about that? I mean, at this point, I'm thinking, how rude? She didn't even say hello. But I didn't have an answer. But I thought this is my only chance. So I just started talking. And talking and digging. I said, Miss, if you let me onto this course today, I promise you I'm going to be one of the highest achievers in the class. I'm thinking, what am I doing? I hate education. But I kept talking and digging and digging and talking. I said, Miss, if you let me onto this course today, I promise you I'm going to get the highest grade 
possible, which at that time was 18 distinctions out of 18 units, like three A stars. I mean, I didn't even know what three A stars was. It just sounded sexy. <laughs> but I realized the hole I was digging for myself, so I just stopped talking. Personally, I was ready to walk back out that room and carry on doing what I was doing, but I could see that she was thinking. And yeah, she leant forward and she said, Cameron, today you've inspired me, so I'm going to give you a chance. But do not let me down. So for me personally, I knew I had two whole years to turn my big dream of going to America to a reality. And I didn't want to look back on my life saying five, 10, 15, 20 years of think, ah, what if? I understand, I'm not gonna change everybody when I do my motivational sessions, but if I can change a small handful of people, then I've done my job. So I wanna ask you a question. Are you willing to open your mind enough to allow my words to help and support you on this roller coaster I call big dreams? And you know what? I never went to America. Despite so many of my best friends getting scholarships, they got scholarships I didn't. I was a grown 19, 20 year old, literally crying myself to sleep because I sacrificed so much, I failed. But now personally, I'm so glad that I'm not in America because if I was, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing. And even though I didn't go, I achieved sports awards, I represented Great Britain three times in American football. But most importantly, I got those 18 distinctions out of 18 units. I promised a teacher. And over time, I realized that this dream of going to America wasn't really my big dream. And this is quite common because so many of us think we want something, but then over time, we actually realize we really don't. But then that poses the question, how do I find my big dream? I wish I had an easy answer. But the fact is, my big dream didn't really just hit me. It didn't matter too much at this time because I just started university. And it was there where I felt like a complete outcast from the way I looked and from the way I sounded. Plus, I was the only individual who had the vision of graduating and being fully self-employed. But in what? I mean, at this time, I was listening to motivational speakers, and I felt like nobody was doing this in the UK, and where I came from, I felt like we needed it. But then only if it was real and from the heart. So I started to develop this idea of becoming this individual who inspires people on the largest scale, not just a few Facebook posts here and there, and being a leader in my sports teams. I wanted to think bigger. So I started to discover my big dream of becoming this motivational speaker who one day takes over the UK and the world. The problem was, fear realized I lacked a huge amount of confidence. I had no experience, and fear was also fully aware that I was extremely insecure with how I felt especially when I got stumped with another obstacle in my first year at university. And it was there, I was seriously struggling. I couldn't understand any of the work. I was sat in class thinking I'm becoming more stupid. Maybe I've had too many hits in my head in American football, I don't know. Until one of my teachers said to me, Cameron, I think you may have dyslexia. I said, dyslexia? I can't even spell it. What are you laughing for? <laughs> and she said, no, I really, really think you got dyslexia. I said, no, I really, really think you're wrong. <coughs> Didn't understand it, so I did what we all do. I went home and I asked Google. <laughs> and you ever got a sore throat, not feeling too well, so you type the symptoms in online, and it basically tells you you've got 24 hours to live and death is certain? <laughs> well, everyone does it. <laughs> I did this with dyslexia. Still didn't understand it, so I dismissed it. Until I started becoming more aware of things I was doing when I was reading. I started to skip over words, my processing was extremely slow, and a list of things can really go on until one day, I decided to take the test. 
I was informed that I'm heavily dyslexic and apparently I got attention deficit disorder. That news shocked me. I didn't respond well. I made it out to be this huge thing and because of that, my growth at that time was very, very limited. Until I started looking into, you know, celebrities who had dyslexia. There was people like Albert Einstein, you had Will Smith, Richard Branson. Okay, interesting. Maybe it doesn't limit me. And Richard Branson's a successful businessman, so my attention started to shift. So how could I become fully self-employed? Maybe I could fulfill my big dream of becoming this motivational speaker who delivers impact and value to thousands of people who need it. Nope, fear came back and I created the most outrageous business idea ever what will blow every single one of your minds. Yes, that's right, I created a generic clothing brand. And when I mean clothing brand, I mean just a design, I pull it on a t-shirt and I try to sell it. And in all fairness, it went really well to begin with. But then over time, it started to decline. That rhymed again. Resulting in the termination of the business. I failed. That was embarrassing. People expected me to do well. But that was partially my own fault. The reason why is because on the surface, I made out like everything was going amazing. But deep down, I wasn't keeping my word. I wasn't doing what I said I was going to do. I didn't execute, so I failed. Now put your hands up if you've not kept your word before. Put your hands up. Don't lie to me. Okay, I'm on the right path. And that wiped all the confidence from me. The combination of my teenage years, not getting a scholarship to America, dyslexia, failed business, terrible relationships, and I just got severe acne. And yeah, if you look close enough, you can still see the scars on my face today. And to top that off, I was living in a freezing cold flat and I had absolutely no money. I was trying to complete my degree as well as trying to get my businesses off the ground, so I had to sacrifice something. So I sacrificed one key factor to high performance, and that is my sleep. So I just got a simple job working on the hotel reception from 10 at night till 7 in the morning. I did that four to five days a week. When I leave my shift, I got a five mile ride from there straight to my university class. And one morning when I was riding, out of nowhere, I was taken off my bike. And yeah, at this stage, I knew two things. Number one is that it's a car, and number two, that it's going fast. But it's kind of true, right, because it really did go in slow motion. I remember I hit the ground, I rode over and over, and I was just led there, waiting for the ambulance to come. But then fast forward a couple of days later, I remember waking up in my own bed. I didn't have no serious injuries, but it was playing on my mind. But I remember waking up and going to my window, and as I looked out, I seen people stuck in traffic. And believe it or not, that feeling got to me because I thought to myself, if something would have happened to me a couple of days ago, these people would still be stuck in traffic now, and it'd be like I never, ever existed. I'm sorry, that's not the most positive thing, but that's the truth. What made it worse was people was looking up to me for motivation and positivity, but deep down I was struggling. I was there thinking, what's the point, putting on a fake smile for everybody else, pretending that I was okay, but I wasn't. And I was in that mindset for about six months. But then when I was in the hospital, these nurses kept saying to me that these road users really need to think bike, think bike and think bike, but the truth is, every single one of us, regardless of our age, everyone needs to think life. Because you can go into any city center, any town center, you see people my age, they're 25, they're 40, they're 50, they're healthy, they're living, but then they got nothing inside. Every single day, they wake up with no purpose, no motivation, and no big dream. 
And to me personally, that's a nightmare and something that I want to change. I want to ask every single one of you right now, what do you really, really want? And if you have absolutely no idea, my advice would be go out there and experience as many different things as you can. But if you do know what you want, make sure that you put in 110% and make sure that you don't have any regrets or any what ifs. I'm six years in to this roller coaster I call big dreams. And on the path, I found a woman of my dreams. I graduated from university, being the first in my family to ever do it. And I also kept my promise, graduating and being fully self-employed. Now I'm one of the top motivational speakers in the UK, talking close to 100,000 people every single year. And I can happily say that I found my big dream and it keeps getting bigger. Yes, I still have a very long way to go, but that's what pathways are all about. And because the topic for this TEDx event is pathways, I want to leave you with one final question. Do you have the courage to overcome fear and failure to create your own path? Big dreams. <laughs>